Hey my friends, today I'm going to show you how to create Lumiosity masks in Affinity Photo. This topic was suggested by Vladimir, thank you for that. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. It's very important, thanks and let's get started. So there is a good news and there is a bad news. The bad news is there isn't really a good way to create Lumiosity mask inside of Affinity Photo natively. So we have to figure out a workaround. So basically the way that Affinity Photo offers is that you go to select and then you have tonal ranges, which is midtones, shadows and highlights. And you can see that this is not very precise. So we need an option where we can really select the ranges that we actually want to have. So I played around with Affinity Photo for a bit and they came up with a great workaround. I will show you a beginner version and then also a version that's a bit more advanced. So um, the beginner version where you can actually see the selection you're making is that you first create a rectangle and pull it over your picture like that. And you can fill this with any kind of color I'm selecting red as a color because this is the classic selection or mask color. Okay, with our rectangle selected, with the layer selected, I'm going to press Ctrl and G on my keyboard to create a group. So you can see now we have a group, the rectangle is inside. And now with the group selected, when I go over here to the cogwheel, it says blend ranges. You click on that and on the right side, it says underlying composition ranges. And these are basically the luminosity ranges because on the left side, we have the darker areas and on the right side, we have the brighter areas. So if you pull the left selection point down, you will see that we only get the brighter areas. You can pull in the right selection point like this to select or catch more of the brighter areas. If you want to select only the darker areas, you go the other way around. So you push up the left point and pull down the right point like this. So you can see now we are only selecting the darker areas in our picture. And you can make this even smoother by creating more selection points. Like you can click here on the line and you can unhook this selection down here for linear. So this is actually creating a smooth curve that gives us a lot of um, adjustment for the values that we actually want to catch with our selection. So now that I've done this, because this is a group and this is the great thing about this method is you can now put any kind of adjustment inside of that group. So this basically luminosity mask is applied to anything that's inside of the group. So for example, let's create an adjustment for curves like that. Pull this inside of the group, whoops, like that. And now we can hide our um, red rectangle by clicking on the hook next to our layer like that. And you will be surprised that when you move around a curve, nothing is happening. The reason for that is because it only affects things that are inside of the group. So what we need to do is we click on our picture layer. So we right click on our picture layer and duplicate this. And then we put this into the group on the lowest layer like this. Okay, and now when I move my curve around, you can see that this only affects the selection we have done before. And we could now say, for example, we only want to have the darker areas on in the background, like on the mountain um, darker, but not so much in the foreground. And because this is a group, what we can do is we can either create a mask so let's create a mask here that we put on the top layer and we can zoom out a little bit, create a really big brush in this case. So it's very soft. So I set mine to 3200 pixels, hardness zero. Um, the color is not completely black. It's a soft gray and I'm just brushing down here a little bit. So this is getting softer down here. Um, and so now I have a mask that is reducing the effect that I have on the picture, as you can see here. Uh, let's make the curve even more extreme so we can see the effect better. So this is without the mask and this is with the mask. As you can see now it only or mostly only adjusts the background because I didn't make the mask completely black. It still affects a little bit the foreground, but this makes like 
the picture a little bit softer it fits together a little bit better okay so this is what you can do and i said this is more a beginner version because this has um this red rectangle that gives you a chance to see where your selection actually is if you want to skip this step you can actually do the very same thing by just creating the curves layer whoops we have to put this on top because now we only want to have the curves layer and i can pull this down like before so it's getting darker and i can again go selected the curves adjustment just go into the blend ranges and select the darker areas and i also have the option to now just brush with my brush or paint with my brush on the adjustment layer um, because it already has a mask built in so i can just brush on this on this area down here and you can see that it basically is the exact same effect that we had before there is a difference though and the big difference is that this now because it is not a group this adjustment of the blend ranges and the mask only apply to this one adjustment layer so if you want to do multiple adjustments at the same time with the same settings let's go back to our group before so for example we could go in here and make an hsl adjustment too uh, to shift the colors around um, in a certain way let's make it really extreme so we can actually see it uh, you can see here that now the colors are shifting in these areas that we selected before so you can do a lot of different adjustments basically in your picture um, with the group and if you have your only your curve adjustment with these settings this applies only to that one layer so that's a big difference and of course it's a bit more advanced because you can't see as good where your selection precisely is while here with our rectangle we have a very precise vision um a visual feedback of where our luminosity mask is happening and where the effects are actually applied in the picture okay so that was my a way to create a luminosity mask in affinity photo thank you very much for watching and see you in the next tutorial thank you bye